Hello class, welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 2-6, which is all about interest. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to solve problems involving interest. So let's quickly talk about what interest is before we move on to the first um, example. So interest, uh, if you, you've maybe heard of something called a loan. Like let's say you want to buy um, a car, okay? So usually people don't have all of the money that they need in order to buy a car, so they have to take out a loan. And when you take out a loan, that means you're borrowing money from like the bank and uh, the bank is going to charge you interest in order to borrow that money. So that way the bank can make money off of you. Okay, so that means maybe you um, took out, let's say like $10,000 in a loan to pay for this car. And maybe the bank says that your interest rate is going to be 3.1. And so what you would do is you're going to end up like multiplying these numbers together, um, usually actually 0 0.031, because we always do the decimal version of a percentage. <clears throat> and that will tell you how much money on top of the loan you have to pay back. So you're not just going to pay back that $10,000, you are also going to pay the bank more because they're lending you money. Okay, so that's one way to look at interest. Another way of looking at it is if you have a savings account with a bank. So let's say that you keep putting money into a bank and you let it just sit there. You can earn interest by letting your money sit in the bank. And that um, it works the same way as the loan, except this time you get that extra money rather than the bank getting that extra money, okay? So this is called simple interest. There are multiple other types of interest that you can work with, but today we're just going to look at simple interest. So the equation for it is I, a capital I, equals PRT. I represents whatever that interest amount is, how much you, how much extra you either owe or how much money you have earned. P stands for the principal, which is another way of saying the starting amount or the amount borrowed, okay? And then R represents the interest rate, and we want it in decimal form. And then T represents time in years, okay? So it's really, really important that you remember that this represents years. Uh, we'll look at an example where we're given something other than years, so I'll show you how to convert uh, with that. All right, let's jump into our first example. Example one, we have Magdalena put $580 into a savings account. The account pays 2.5% simple interest each year. If she neither adds nor withdraws money from the account, how much interest will she earn after two years? So I'm solving for the interest. So I say I equals, I'm just going to write the equation up here. So I equals the principal. So what's the starting amount in this problem? She started by putting $580 into the account. So I'm going to say 580 times the interest rate, which is 2.5. So I'm going to change that to a decimal, which would be 0 0.025. And then I'm going to multiply by the time in years, which is two. Okay, so then I can type all of this into the calculator at once. I'm going to type 580 times 0 0.025 times two. And that tells me that Magdalena is going to earn $29 in interest within the two years. So you might be thinking that's not much. And you're right, that's not much. But it's still something for just putting money in there, not touching it, not doing anything else to it. I don't know about you guys. I wouldn't mind getting $29. Okay. Now I want you to solve this one on your own. Curtis deposits $550 into a savings account. The account pays 1.75 simple interest on an annual basis. So fun fact, annual means once per year. So once per year, okay? If he does not add or withdraw money from the account, 
how much interest will he earn after three years? So go ahead, set up your equation. I always want to see your initial setup and then your final answer. Go ahead and do that. Good luck. All right, hopefully you set it up like this first line right here. And then you, when you multiplied it, you got 28.875. But since we're talking about money, we always round to just two decimal places. So this five is going to change that seven into another eight. So it's $28.88. Okay. Let's try another one. So we have suppose Magdalena opens a savings account for only six months. So you can see already right here, this is something less than a year. We'll sh I'll show you what that's going to look like. She put $580 into that account and earns 3.5% each year. So again, interest equals principal times the rate times time. So I equals 580. That's what she started with. My interest rate would be 0 0.035 times. And now whenever you're given months, you put the number of months over the number of months in a year. So in this case, I put six over 12. And when you type that into a calculator, you're going to want to put parentheses around that. Okay. So you want to do parentheses six divided by 12 parentheses. So the way I'm going to type this in, I'm going to say 580 times 0 0.035 times, I'm going to open a parentheses, hit six divided by 12, close the parentheses, hit enter. And I see that it is $10.15. So I'm going to add my label. And that would be my final answer. Okay, let's say that this said eight months, then the only thing you would change is it would be eight over 12 instead. If it said nine months, it'd be nine over 12. If it said 18 months, it would be 18 over 12. Okay, so it is possible where the top number will be bigger than the bottom number, and that's okay. Um, you just have to remember that it always gets put over 12, no matter what number it is. All right. So now we have a question for you to do. Curtis invests $430 into a savings account. The account pays 2.5% simple interest on an annual basis. If, she, oh, that should say, if he, sorry, does not add or withdraw money from the account, how much interest will he earn after 15 months? Go ahead, set up the problem and then solve it. Good luck. All right, hopefully you set up your equation to look like the one that I put arrows on either side of. I equals 430 times point z or 0 0.025 times and then 15 divided by 12. And once you calculate that out, you should get 13.4375, which if you round for money, that means two decimal places, this seven is gonna change the three into a four. So that's how I got $13.44. If you have questions about this or anything else from the video, please don't hesitate to reach out for some help. I am happy to help you. Have a great day.